In many situations, it's not possible to assign participants to conditions randomly. Of course, the threat of selection to internal validity automatically applies in that case. Systematic differences between conditions are now much harder to rule out. Random assignment can be impossible due to pragmatic or ethical reasons, but also when the independent variable is an individual differences variable. For example, if we want to investigate the effect of sex on political conservativeness, we can't randomly assign people to be female or male. When random assignment is impossible, one way to mitigate the selection threat to internal validity is to match participants on relevant background variables. We find matching groups on these variables and discard participants that do not match up. For example, we can match men and women in terms of age and maybe educational level to make sure that they don't differ systematically, at least on these two properties. We've thereby excluded two possible alternative explanations for any difference in political conservativeness between men and women. There is a potential danger in the use of matching, though. A thing called undermatching could occur. This can happen when the conditions are matched on a variable that is measured with some degree of error and is related to the variables of interest. To understand what this means and how undermatching can occur, you first need to understand what regression to the mean is. Suppose we were able to measure someone's intelligence repeatedly without any practice effect. Assuming the test we use is valid and reliable, we would still get slightly different results each time, since we cannot measure intelligence perfectly. OK, now suppose we pick a random person from our pool of participants. We measure their intelligence and find a very high score of 132. The mean intelligence score is 100, and about 70% of people score between 85 and 115. So what kind of score would you expect if we measured this person's intelligence again? Well, because such a high score is very uncommon, it's more likely that the score of 132 is an overestimation of someone's real intelligence. The next score for this person will probably be lower. Of course, we could have a genius in our pool of participants and find a higher score on the second test. But if we look at a group of people with high scores, we can say that on average, their second score will be lower. Some will get a higher score, but most will get a lower score, closer to the mean. So that's why we call this change in scores regression toward the mean. How can this cause problems when we use matching to create comparable conditions? Well, suppose we want to investigate the effectiveness of watching Sesame Street in improving cognitive skills for disadvantaged versus advantaged toddlers. Let's say our disadvantaged toddlers come from poor, broken homes. They receive very little stimulation to develop cognitive skills like reading and counting. The advantaged children have nurturing parents and are provided with ample educational stimulation. If we want to investigate if watching Sesame Street improves cognitive skills differently for disadvantaged versus advantaged children, then it would seem like a good idea to match children at the start of the study in terms of cognitive ability, using a pretest. If we start with groups of equal ability, we can get a good idea of the effect of Sesame Street for both groups. If one group starts out smarter, then the improvement in both groups is just harder to compare. Now, matching is only a problem if the variable that we match on is related to our variables of interest. Here we use a pretest of cognitive ability to select comparable disadvantaged and advantaged toddlers. So in this case, the relation between the matching variable and dependent variable is very strong, because they measure the same property. It's also highly likely that our matching variable, cognitive ability, the pretest, is related to the independent variable, advantaged versus disadvantaged background. It's likely that in real life, children who lack stimulation and security, whether through nature or nurture, already have lower cognitive abilities. What happens if these groups differ in cognitive ability and we select a sample of toddlers from the disadvantaged and the advantaged group so that they have about the same cognitive ability? We match them up. Well, that means we choose disadvantaged toddlers with relatively high scores, relative to the mean score of their group, and advantaged children with relatively low scores, relative to the mean score of their group. Now, in the disadvantaged selection, it's likely that at least some of these relatively high scores are overestimations, and a second measurement will be closer to the mean of the disadvantaged children, resulting in a lower mean score for this group. 
In the advantage selection, it's likely that at least some of these relatively low scores are underestimations, and a second measurement will be closer to the mean of the advantaged children, resulting in a higher mu score for this selection. So without any intervention, we would already expect a difference between these groups on the post-test, based on just the regression to the mean effect. Of course, this effect might lead to horribly inaccurate conclusions about the effectiveness of watching Sesame Street. Suppose the effect of watching Sesame Street was small, but equally effective for both groups. A large regression effect could result in lower scores for disadvantaged kids, leading us to conclude that watching Sesame Street is bad for disadvantaged children. This distorting effect of regression to the mean, due to matching, showing a detrimental effect instead of the hypothesized beneficial effect, is called undermatching. Now, this effect can only occur if the matching variable is related to the variables of interest, and is measured with a fair amount of error. Which is unfortunately the case for most social and psychological variables. This, of course, does not apply to variables like age, sex, and educational level, which can be assessed without, well, almost without, measurement error. 